Hello, everybody. Welcome to a type of webinar. We're going to talk to you about control IQ stuff. Hang on. Gallery view. Now there's two of us. Hello. Uh, my name is Christopher Snyder. I'm Typos Community and Clinic Success Manager. Joining me today is Abby Bayer Pratt. She's from the support team and also a registered nurse and a diabetes educator. She's got a lot of initials after her name. Abby, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I, well, two days ago, today's June 3rd, 2021. Two days ago, I sent out an email telling everybody we now officially fully support Control IQ data visualization. That was exciting. Uh, as a Control IQ user myself, I know you were also using Control IQ from our friends at Tandem Diabetes Care. Uh, it's a very, it's been a very fun week. Um, I'm excited to talk about this with you and with the growing number of attendees. I'm just going to try and not pay attention to in the sidebar of the Zoom webinar window. For everybody in attendance, if you have questions for us, we will be answering them at the end of the day, end of the session. It's only a half hour long. Um, use the Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom window and we'll have ourselves a good time. So I'm going to do the thing where I announce during a Zoom call that I'm going to share my screen as I share my screen and welcome you formally to this with a lovely little quick presentation. So we're going to cover today with my high blood sugar that just vibrated on my table. I was just wondering what my blood sugar was. I was like, I did yeah, not. I'm, I'm 205 <laughs> East. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 101 sideways magically. I have, wow. we will see in my data later, Abby, that <laughs> I have this issue between like 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. when it comes to bolusing. Um, but uh, we will get there. So today we're going to talk about Tidepool briefly. For most of you already know who we are, but for those of you that don't, I'll give you a brief introduction. We're going to talk about uploading Control IQ technology data to your Tidepool account. We will talk about viewing your Control IQ technology data, uh, like specifically viewing my Control IQ technology data, for an example. Um, and then for the clinicians in attendance, hello, we see you, we appreciate you. We will talk a little bit about what you can come to expect in addition to Control IQ data and Tidepool, but sort of your broader Tidepool expectations. And then at the end, as mentioned, uh, we will answer any questions you do have. So we can use that Q&A button at the bottom there. So um, I've got the beginning, right? So Tidepool is a nonprofit organization. Hello again. Uh, we make diabetes software that integrates data from over 50 blood glucose meters, insulin pumps, and continuous glucose monitors. And that does include now, um, which is why you're all here, Tandem's t X2 pump with Control IQ technology. Uh, those of you that are familiar with Tandem's products, um, this isn't necessarily like a sales thing, but Control IQ will adjust for high and low blood glucose automatically as it has been cleared by the FDA to do so. It's pretty cool. I think so. Um, but I will let you determine that for yourself. Um, when it comes to uploading the data, that requires Typo Uploader. Abby, do you have thoughts on Typo Uploader? I love Typo Uploader, um, but I also you, work you here. You work here though. You're, yeah. <laughs> well, I loved it before I worked here. Okay. Um, Typo Uploader will work on Mac and Windows computers. And it requires, so for your T-Slim pumps, requires a micro USB cable um, that is data capable. So if it's a charge only, the one that like, you know, comes with your diffuser, that's not gonna work. You need one that can send data. And um, be aware that your first upload, even if you upload every day before updating Tidepool Uploader, your first upload with Control IQ data will take a bit longer because Typo Uploader is going to take all of that data off of your pump again, as if it was your first upload to your account ever. So be patient with it. Um, and then if from there, your future uploads will be faster like you're used to. The um, version that, the minimum version that will upload Control IQ data, I'm like pointing to my screen, like you can see what I'm doing, but down there at the bottom, version 2.36.3, or higher, which there isn't anything higher yet, but in the future, um, those are the versions that will upload Control IQ data. And if you don't have the most recent one, you can visit tidepool.org slash download to install it. Or if you have um, Tidepool Uploader open, it should just prompt you to update after a few seconds when you open it. I have my high CGM buzz, alert buzz. set at the same threshold that Control IQ is set. So like I get the double 200 vibrates. I'm gonna actually disconnect my pump and put it in my pocket so you don't hear that vibrating anymore. But that's a separate matter that we can talk about later about where my thresholds are because alarm fatigue is real. Real life with diabetes folks. Tidepool web is what we're using to visualize your Tidepool data. Um, a couple of things to note here is that Google Chrome is required to view Tidepool data. It's the only supported browser. Make sure that is installed on any computer you intend to use to view that data. Uh, in a moment, we're going to look at my actual data for the record. Hang on, let me stop the screen share. 
hi, I can send you my data being part of this webinar in case anybody was worried or concerned. Um, so we're going to walk through some of that real quick uh, and have ourselves a bit of a go. I did have one other fun slide here that I wanted to share real quick. And that was the fact that this is a share. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, did, did I break you, it? Did you get the Zoom thing? Did I break it? Can you see my screen? There we go. It's a live demo, folks. So normally this is going to be a part where it. I say live date. Wait, you can't see it? No. Hang on. Stop share. You'd think that with a year and a half in this pandemic and all of these Zoom that we've been doing, I could handle. How about now? There it is. It's a live Ooh. demo. This is supposed to be my <laughs> sort of humor, humor, humor filled transition into the part where we're going to show my live data live and it's a live Success. demo folks, but then Zoom went kind of wonky on it. So, all right, let's look at my data in Typepool. Let me uh, do a new share screen. All right, so here is again, Typepool web. This is actually my data in Tidepool. I'm going to be walking through sort of all of it, but I'm paying particular attention to the control IQ specific things that you'll be able to see within Tidepool web. Um, uh, I, uh, again, because I'm using control IQ, I'm using a Dexcom G6, which means that generally speaking within the basics view, which is a device summary overview of everything that's been uploaded to a Tidepool account, you're not typically gonna be seeing a lot of data in this BG reading section because that CGM is, um, it comes factory calibrated. So I'm not using my blood glucose meter. I'm not manually entering blood glucose values into my pump for a bolus because the blood glucose value is automatically being uh, included in the bolus calculator whenever I pull up in that prompt. Um, that said, if you are manually entering values into your pump for a bolus or a correction, they would show up in the BG reading section here uh, in the middle, as you can see with this one dot here. Um, let's start on the right side of the basics view. Uh, right now we're looking at 30 days worth of data. I know this because I have selected 30 days worth of data. We start on the uh, right here, you're looking at my CGM data, average daily time and range based off my CGM data. Uh, green is good. In this case, our default target range in Tidepool is set to 70 to 180. You can actually customize your blood glucose target ranges to be whatever you want. So if you are pregnant or planning to get pregnant and you're looking for tighter blood glucose control and the data to reflect that in terms of where we are calculating your time and range, you can set that range to be whatever you want it to be. Uh, we are, and then we have a consistent color coding scheme across all the data that you're looking at in Tidepool. So light purple will be above range, dark purple will be well above range, light red will be below range, in this case, 54 to 70, um, and dark red is below 54. Uh, shout out to my folks that live outside of the United States. We do display data in millimoles. Uh, you can make that change within your user profile by clicking this gear icon at the top for the rest of this demo. However, we will be looking at my data in MGDL or freedom units as they are now affectionately called here at Tidepool. Um, we also are showing on the right side here, average blood glucose based off of CGM data, essential uh, usage percentage. Typically you're gonna be expecting if I'm using control IQ, that CGM usage um, should be pretty high. Uh, we have our average daily insulin ratio broken down between basal and bolus insulin delivery. In this case, you can see my percentages and my units. So I'm, I personally target a 50-50 ratio. So I'm pretty on point right there. Yay for me. Um, and then we get to some fun stuff here. We have average daily time and automation. So this is time spent actually running control IQ. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with control IQ, for any tandem users out there, um, if you are changing your sensor for those two hours while the sensor is warming up, technically control IQ is not actually on. If you're changing your site, technically control IQ is not actually on. You can get a sense of where, um, uh, of how often control IQ is actually enabled um, with this automation widget. So in theory, if you are maximizing your use of control IQ outside of those instances whenever you are losing CGM connectivity or you're doing your site changes, um, this percentage, you should expect to see this to be pretty high. If it's not, um, that might be an indication that something else is happening with in potentially your CGM usage, because again, that CGM data is required for control IQ to actually be kicking into gear. The next uh, interesting uh, widget that is specific for control IQ users is our average daily time and activity widget. You can hover over each of these to see average daily time spent um, using sleep activity and exercise activity. Um, I have my sleep schedule set for, I think it's 1030 to 7 a.m. Uh, so you can see um, I have that eight and a half hours where I'm using the sleep activity setting programmed in. Um, for anybody that has a different schedule set up, you would see that bar increase or decrease again based off of your usage within the reporting time period. And then for the exercise activity, uh, which does raise that blood glucose target for basal delivery, um, you'll see um, average time spent within the reporting window here. So again, on average per day for this 30-day window, three hours spent in exercise activity for one reason or another. 
We're also showing on the right side here, average daily carbs. Uh, glucose management indicator is an approximation of A1C based off of CGM data. And lastly, coefficient of variation to show you that variability of CGM data. What does this actually mean? This means that as a person with diabetes viewing my data at home, if I'm not going in to get my blood drawn for an A1C, I can pull up a 30 or even up to a 90 day report within the basics view, look at my GMI and my time and range to get a pretty decent idea of how I'm doing with respect to my own personal diabetes management targets. Um, so you can see for this, for the past 30 days, I've spent about 74% time and range. It's not too bad. We'll talk about the lows in a little bit. Um, Abby, have I missed anything on the sidebar? How am I doing? I think you're doing great. I am. Um, the only comments I have are, I don't like to say that green is good because there's no such thing as a good blood sugar. So all you okay. educators out there, stick with your high and low and your in range because they're all just blood sugars. It's not, no offense to you, Christopher. It's just a Fair. personal thing. Fair. And can... the other thing, <laughs> the other thing I want to point out, which is my own uh, brain catch up that I had to do is that your time and activity is likely not going to add up to a hundred percent because it's only that little purpley blue color area is only showing you sleep and exercise activity. So if you add those, subtract them from 100, the leftover will show you your sort of like regular control IQ time. Thank you for that. And thank you for the Ooh, language. Someone question. just said green is gold. Oh, I Green is gold. That. Amy, shout Ooh. out to Amy. I'm going to yeah. answer this one live and say, yes, green is gold. I will make sure I like that I that. use that from now on in my demos when I do that. Um, we have a message uh, question from Kirk. I'm going to answer this now. How do you show a 90 day trend? The calendar icon up here, you can actually click to go through and select 90 days of data. So where would 90 days be? Here's 90 and apply. Wait for it. Let's see how many dots we can pull up here. Yeah, we won't have, well. It's a live demo. 90 days, yeah, yeah. So my timer range actually didn't change too much, which is, oh, there it goes. I guess that says something for the system, right? Consistency. Huh. Interesting. But here, you can see 90 days of not using my blood glucose meter, not <laughs> manually entering data. Here's 90 days of boluses, though. Mm. It's pretty spectacular. I'm going to drop it back down to 30 and um, uh, just because it's a little bit easier to manage. But you get the idea in terms of, how much data you can actually look at here. So um, that's the sidebar. Moving down, we have our bolusing section here. Uh, so we have a bunch of different filters at the top. I'll go through that momentarily. Um, the key thing right now is that what we're looking at in this moment, these are the boluses whenever I actually did something. I are manually bolusing if I just want two units because I want two units. If I'm entering carbs for a bolus, um, that's this is all, all these boluses right here, the 112 that you're seeing, the average of four per day. This is uh, me initiating that on my own. Uh, we can get a little more precise with some of the filters within the bolusing section here. This first filter is for a calculator. So this is me entering carbs for a bolus. You can see how often I am using an extended bolus, which was one time over here on the 16th. Anytime I had a bolus interrupted, which conveniently was the exact same day, I think I might've been walking the dog and I didn't wanna have that extra insulin ready to go. Um, so I was a little bit foolish there. Um, foolish, there was some uh, ju judgment um, issues. Uh, word choice. Diabetes foolery. Yeah, some diabetes shenanigans were at play there. Uh, we have a filter here for corrections anytime you are um, including a correction in your bolus. Uh, anytime you are overriding a bolus to request more insulin than your settings recommend, we have a filter for that, as well as a filter for the bolus underride. So you're requesting less insulin uh, than your um, settings recommend. And then finally, the manual bolus here is again, just saying, hey, I want two units give me two units, please. Uh, lastly, the other uh, filter and option here we have is for automated boluses. So again, right now we're looking at um, the user initiated boluses. Here's everything that I've done. If you want to see what control IQ has initiated with the automated bolus um, feature, you click on this filter and you can see the difference here. 128 boluses took place over this 38 day window that were initiated by control IQ. 112 by me, 128 by the system. Uh, it is at times for me, humbling to see how active this thing is uh, doing what it is cleared to do to try and keep me in range. Um, and that is, uh, yeah, that's where I am for that. Um, when I look at my data personally, I trend to look at um, any clusters of overrides or underrides together, as that may be an indication that I'm not necessarily trusting my settings. Um, Abby, is there anything that stands out to you whenever you're looking at your data specifically within the bowl sync section? Um, no, I think you hit it all. I think that automated is really interesting because that tells you where Control IQ is sort of making up for what uh, we may not have entered on our own. So those high numbers, while they're super helpful, they're as an educator, I'd want to dig into those and see sort of why the pump is having to do so much work on the back end. Although they could be like, you know, 0.01 units, in which case 
can't really do anything about that. But. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I do want to reiterate because Christine did ask a clarification question in the Q and A button. Thank you again for your question, Christine. Um, the 112 bolses that you're seeing right now, these are all the user initiated ones. These are the ones that I did something. I'm the one in control. I entered carbs. I requested manually um, an amount of insulin. The automated bolses are separate. Um, so the 128 that you see here, um, this is all what Control IQ has done, and back over here is what I have done. Um, so for example, let's look at Saturday the eighth here. You see four bolses that I've done. And then there were six that control IQ automatically gave over that same same 24 hour time period, for example. Um, there were seven over here. Oh my. Oh, guess what? UPS is right outside. <laughs> and the dog is going to let me know that UPS is right outside. So I might have to mute momentarily while the dog lets me know that UPS is outside. We're going to keep going because this is the work from home life. Wait, hang on. We're going to keep <laughs> going. Infusion site changes is next within the basics where you can see how often you're changing your infusion site as a clinician. Um, your patient could simply say, Oops, hang on. Miles loves the UPS guy. So uh, I don't know what he was going to say there, but what I would say about infusion site changes is, um, I don't know what you were going to say, actually. They're pretty self-explanatory. I was going to say that the data doesn't lie. Um, so rather than having a patient simply say you're infusion, they're changing the site every three days, you can see that I am running typically four days per infusion site. Um, but as a clinician, if you're seeing five and six days, it might be an indication you could talk um, for something you could talk with your patient about um, to try and bring their infusion site change usage potentially down to three or four days if that's something that you want to target with them together in collaboration as you are discussing. Um, again, every patient is unique. Your diabetes can and will vary. Um, thinking about sort of wh where the data can inform the conversation is what I try to um, stress whenever I'm talking about tide pools use when it comes um, to the clinical setting. Um, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to David. My dog stopped barking that quickly. No, I muted. Um, I was, I had the mute on standby. So you didn't hear him barking after I muted David, but I appreciate it. The dog is, I will show the dog by the end of this call for those of you who want to stick around. Um, he's a good dog when he wants to be. Um, in the basal section of our basics view, um, we're looking at the basal events that take place outside of what's regularly scheduled. So as a tandem T-Slim X2 pump user with Control IQ technology, I had my programmed in basal rates. I had my programmed in settings, um, but things will adjust beyond that. Um, anytime my basal delivery is suspended, we have a filter available for that here. We have also a filter available to show you when the automation has exited for one reason or another. Um, typically, these suspends and automation exits will correspond at minimum with my site changes. But again, if you um, are losing connectivity with your CGM for more than 15 minutes, that will bump you out of Control IQ because it re requires a certain amount of data to keep going. But you can get a sense of um, when those automation exits are taking place when you are being kicked out of Control IQ um, being on with this filter here. Um, I know we said questions at the end, but they keep coming in and I want to make sure that we are addressing things in the moment. So um, question from Sally here. Are you able to explain more about the average daily time and automation, please? Um, so yes, let me make sure I mark that. Thank you for your question, Sally. So again, generally speaking, um, I don't want to presume this is me and my data. I try to run control IQ as often as technically and humanly possible. Um, if for some reason um, I was having a bit of a, a bout with my, um, with my pump, if I wasn't trusting my CGM readings, if for whatever reason I, I ran out of CGM supplies or something like that, that might, might be an indication um, of when I'm not necessarily running control IQ. If I don't often um, uh, change my CGM uh, as regularly as possible to minimize time without that CGM data, that might, be, you know, also, might also be an indication of when I am um, not with running control IQ um, the entire time. So broadly speaking, again, as a control IQ user, I expect to see this stat to be as high as possible, just to be a reminder to my clinician who may be reviewing my data that I am in fact using control IQ as often as possible. And that would adjust their expectations when they are reviewing my data and preparing to identify things to discuss with me as it relates to my diabetes management habits. Um, question in from Mary, uh, if an infusion site is working, why change it on an artificial schedule? Uh, great question. Uh, your diabetes can and will vary. As you can see, I tend to run four days because that's in part how, how much I'm insulin I'm putting in my cartridge and how well the infusion site is working for me based on where it's placed. Um, I say three to four days because that is initially what is clinically recommended. But again, you're going to have your own diabetes preferences, your own treatment plan that would be in, in, in consultation with your clinical um, team. So I'm not here to prescribe anything to you. I'm here to say, here's what the data is showing you. Um, that is what Typo is here for. Um, bum, bum, bum. 
Uh, questions are going to keep coming. I'm going to keep, we're going to stay with the questions for another minute or two, and then we're going to run over to the daily view because that's where it gets really fun. Um, and the first 24 hours of sensor use of sensor readings are crazy. Wouldn't it be better to rely on blood glucose readings? That is a great question, David. I actually read that really fast. I'm going to slow down momentarily. Take a breath. Question from David. In the first 24 hours of sensor use, the readings are crazy. Wouldn't it be better to rely on blood glucose readings? Uh, that's a great question for your medical team. I'm not here to prescribe how to react to your CGM. Um, you would see within Tidepool how variable the data is, how, how much flex, not flexibility, how much variability there is within your CGM data. Uh, if you are noticing certain trends and Tidepools pointing you in that direction, that is a great question to bring to your endocrinologist or your diabetes educator. Um, let's see, uh, how does, a question in from Joan. Thank you, Joan. How does Control IQ know when you are sleeping? Do you set it when you go to sleep? Um, so my actual sleep schedule and the sleep schedule set on my pump are two distinct things. Um, that said, I have programmed into my pump when I want it to automatically kick into sleep activity. Um, and that is again, something that I have done, uh, based off of co a conversation with my care team. And that has been set in consultation with them. Um, as far as whether or not the pump actually knows I'm sleeping, it does not, it would, it just knows that it needs to be running the sleep activity setting from there. Um, all right, folks, keep the questions coming in. We're going to hop over to the daily view and get into a few more specifics, and then we will get back to the rest of your questions there. Um, I believe the good day was May 13th. <laughs> Hang on. Yes, this is the good day. All right. So here's the daily view in typo. Here's where we're bringing everything together in one place. Here's where we're going to focus the rest of the, wow, nine minutes left in this webinar. I might have to hurry. Uh, and this blood glucose section up here is our CGM data. Again, my Dexcom G6, you'll see the dotted line uh, representing all the values that are being recorded and reported into Tidepool. You can hover over any portion here to see the timestamp and the reported value. Again, the color coding is consistent with your, with your target ranges. Green is goal, goal, keyword there. Um, Light, light purple, dark purple for above range, um, light red, dark red for below range. You can see that over here around, what is this? Yikes, 1.24 a.m. I had a bunch of glucose tabs. I'm still here to talk about it. We're okay. In the bolus and carb section, you can see the carbs you have entered into the yellow circles. You can hover over any of these bolus entries to see blood glucose entered at the time of this carb entry and bolus delivery, carbs entered, insulin delivered, and your insulin pump settings at the time of delivery. Um, Additionally, in the bolus section, any of the automated uh, boluses that take place because Control IQ is doing its thing. You can hover over these entries. The uh, bolus bar is a darker teal. And whenever you hover over that, you'll see the automated tooltip show up here. So at a glance, you can see over the course of the day, here's at this first bolus, this is me and my breakfast. Here's me trying to remember to bolus for lunch. And then here's Control IQ trying to pick up the slack the rest of the afternoon. Um, in the case of a bolus override or underride, the bolus bar will look similar to this lighter blue, but it will have a dark blue tick in the middle. When you hover over that one, you'll be able to see anytime you've adjusted the bolus that you want to uh, receive, uh, be it an underride or an override, and you'll see the details there between the suggested amount, the underridden or overridden amount, and the total amount of insulin delivered. In the basal rate section, here's where it gets really, really fun. Um, the, uh, the Generally speaking, the solid lines here um, are going to be indicating where your basal delivery is actually taking place. Um, uh, in this section right here, this is actually what I had programmed in. This is what was automatically delivered um, by way of control IQ. Dotted lines represent a, uh, an increase or a decrease beyond what was scheduled. So you can see this long dotted line segment here. This is when uh, Control IQ had suspended my basal delivery. You can also see um, a basal delivery increases over here on the left side. Uh, anytime you are using exercise activity, we will flag it with an E and you can hover over that exercise segment to see the duration of that exercise um, activity use. Anytime you have sleep activity enabled, be it um, automatically from your sleep schedule or anytime you are just kicking it in manually yourself, um, you can hover over that Z segment, Z for sleep. Is that a universal symbol? Um, to see the duration of the sleep activity um, in that time frame. Uh, on the right side for this 24 hour period, time and range will show for that entire day, average blood glucose, your basal and bolus insulin delivery is also um, broken down here by units and percentages. Time and automation, again, this entire day is spent running control IQ. Again, I'm expecting to see this as high as possible for the entire day. And then uh, the um, broken down use of sleep and exercise activity within uh, each day. Um, so again, as you're scrolling, you can watch all these stats go. Again, this is live data. Look at all these automated boluses. No shame. It happens. It happens. It's okay. It's okay. These are real, real data, real data. It's okay. But more importantly, time and time and sleep, time and exercise activity. Um, and we also have total carbs entered in the insulin pump at the bottom here, as well as some standard deviation and coefficient of variation to show off the variability of your CGM data. 
So here is where I imagine, let me be more precise. For me, this is where the majority of my own analysis of my own data goes. Um, here's where I'm spending most of my time reviewing um, either specific windows, like a three hour chunk of time over the course of a day to identify what changes I may need to make as I'm looking at multiple days. Uh, most recently, um, I had spent some time looking at my overnight basils because I was not satisfied with the part where I had uh, recurring uh, lows around the same time. So very carefully, very methodically, I had adjusted my basal delivery to try and um, smooth some things out. And we can jump ahead. And more often than not, again, your diabetes can and will vary. But the key here is that with Tide Pool, you can actually review all these settings um, and all of the data that's showing to um, give you a better indication of what's happening. And with a little bit of luck um, and a little bit of actually and a lot of bit of effort, um, I'm seeing more days that look like this. Your, day, your diabetes data can and will vary, but the key here is that I'm using the data to inform the decisions I'm making around my settings adjustments. Um, and it, the, one of the goals of Tybal here is to empower you to make those informed decisions with your care team using the data as the foundation there. Um, so, Abby, we have a lot of questions here. Are you okay to stick around for a few extra minutes? Because I'm gonna try and answer as many of these as possible. And I've been typing answers to people if they weren't directly related to control IQ in Tidepool. Oh, um, thank so you. So there, you can see them in the answered section. That's why some of them have gone away. Cool, cool. All right. So let's start at the top here. Well, so first, before we get to the questions, anything else you want to add to my monologue as we've gone through? Nope. I love it. And I love that you're willing to share your data. Appreciate it. <laughs> right on. All right, uh, we'll start at the top here with the questions. Again, thank you all for your questions. We will stick around for a few extra minutes after the um, initially indicated half hour here. Question from Judy: When you put your data from your X, when you put your data from your X2 pump into Tidepool, does it put the pump data into Apple Health? No, you are uploading data using Tidepool Uploader, connecting with that USB cable as we talked about at the top. Um, once that data gets into your Tidepool account, that's where it's living. Um, we do not have the ability to write data into Apple Health on your iPhone. Uh, thank you for your question. Question in from Debbie. When it shows suspended basal, does it indicate for how long it is suspended for? Let's see over here in the daily view. So here is zero insulin delivery from 1027 a.m. to 1127 a.m. So here's an hour, for example. Um, in the case of uh, Control IQ, this is where you're going to be seeing that basal delivery drop down um, and not actually... Um, not, not actually, and show you when the basal has actually been fully suspended. See if we can find another good chunk of time. Here's another time over here. So here's a little over an hour of zero basal delivery, for example. So again, it's going to be a little more interactive for you to find when that basal was suspended um, or ultimately reduced, but you can use um, your time within Type Pool Up to find that answer with your data. Thank you for your question, Debbie. Uh, question from Floyd. Can we see if we're using more or less in our scheduled uh, then what our scheduled basal rate uh, currently is set. That way we can actually see that our basal rates are more closely um, set to what we actually need throughout the day. Um, great question. Um, this is a piece of feedback we actually have received a couple of times. We have documented it because we do value your feedback to help improve our products. Um, so at a glance, I can't necessarily see currently um, how much basal insulin I've received above or below what was expected based off of my settings. You can see over the course of a given time period as you're looking at your data um, when you have that basal increase or decrease, but not necessarily um, uh, within the tool tips that you're seeing as you're hovering over these segments, um, how much insulin uh, was delivered or not delivered based off what was expected. So um, thank you for that feedback. We will add your vote to uh, that um, uh, iteration and update to our type pool software. And hopefully we can come back around to make that improvement for you and others that are looking for that um, level of, of detail and information within type web. Thank you, Floyd. A uh, question from Lois. Questions keep coming. This is great. Um, if you upload to Tidepool, does that influence where the upload starts if you also upload um, your data later to T-Connect or Diascend? No. Um, it's your data. You are in control of uh, all of it with Tidepool. So you can choose to upload to Tidepool. You can upload to Diascend. You can upload to T-Connect. You can upload to all three. Uh, you know, I know this is a Tidepool webinar, so I'm supposed to be biased about it. But as long as you know that it's your data and you have the right to access it wherever you choose, I'm good. If you're good with T-Connect, you know, Thanks for coming to the webinar. Um, but as long as you're good, I'm good, realistically. Uh, I, I think, I mean, I'm biased. I work here. I think we do a pretty uh, good job of displaying data and making it um, accessible and actionable for you. But if you're satisfied with a different program, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. And um, uploading to Typo does not restrict you from uploading to another platform. So more power to you over there. 
A uh, question from Ellen. Um, uh, did, Tidepool, did the FDA approve use of Tidepool with tandem pumps? Um, so I, I don't think you're asking the question that I'm going to answer, but I'm going to be a little, I'm going to kind of round about our way to this. Um, Tidepool's software, as it's currently what we're looking at right now, Tidepool Web and Tidepool Uploader are what we call as listed with the FDA. There's no actual review or clearance required for retrospective data analysis, so we're good there. Um, and that's the scope of what we're talking about here, uploading your data from your tandem pump to a Tidepool account. So um, the FDA cleared Control IQ to be used. And then as far as accessing the data, you have a couple of options out there and Tidepool is one of them. So thank you for your question, Ellen. Shout out to our friends at the FDA. Um, question from Betty. I struggle with Control IQ increasing my basal when my blood sugar is normal, i.e. 112. My target is 125, but apparently the Control IQ preset for um, is 70 to 110. Um, so Betty, I think actually you should have a conversation with your diabetes educator around um, the settings um, that Control IQ has in place whenever you're running either sleep activity or just the regular um, Control IQ setting. Um, it, it looks to me, based off of what you're uh, indicating in your question here, that there's a little bit of confusion around what Control IQ is or isn't doing, and I don't want to um, point you in the wrong direction there. So I would recommend con contacting either a tandem rep or your diabetes educator to set up a, a chat with them around um, understanding that system there. Um, but thank you for your comment, Betty. Thanks for stopping by. A uh, question from Mary. Can you explain CV a little more, please? Um, I am not a data scientist, but coefficient of variation is essentially an indication of the variability of your CGM data. You can hover over this little um, indicator here to get a little more of an explanation. Um, again, we are color coding these values. So green is goal. I am actually um, doing all right on this one day here, May 29th, as far as that 25% variability. Um, but our tool tip here for those that may not be able to see it says how far apart or how wide your glucose values are. Research suggests a target of 36% or lower. So ideally, um, you know, a lower CV means less variability. So your blood glucose readings from your CGM um, are going to be a little more, um, there's gonna be a little less variability. So we could, for example, find a day that had a lot of variability. Where was that one day that had all sorts of automated boluses? Here's five, here's six. So let's see here. This day would likely have, here we go. So we have a lot of high readings over here on the left and on the right. You can see my CV down here is 36%. So again, if there's a lot more variability within um, that data there, for example. Thank you for your question, Mary. Let's keep the questions going. We're going to try and get to zero. Um, question from Joan. Can this be done on an Android phone? I have, I have not used a phone since before the T-Slim and CGM all on one screen. Um, so, uh, so Joan, hi. Um, Tidepool Uploader is the software you're going to be using to upload data from your tandem pump, and that has to be used on a Mac or a Windows PC. Um, you can download Tidepool Uploader at tidepool.org slash download if you want to give that a go. Boom, boom. Thank you for your question, Joan. Question in from Sally. You mentioned earlier that the software has been developed by you and it's free for anyone to use. Have you not thought about enlisting some kind of payment or donation by current users? Um, stick around to the end of the slide, Sally. I will mention the part where, again, where we are a nonprofit and you can go to typepool.org slash donate if you want to support us. Um, but yes, the software is freely available to clinicians and people with diabetes. It is pretty cool. I do like working here a lot. Uh, thank you for your question. Question from Melissa. When I upload using the tandem icon, um, does it also get the CGM data or do I have to upload using the Nexcom icon? So to be specific here, Typo Uploader is the software we're using. Um, and whenever you're uploading, whenever you connect your tandem pump using Typo Uploader to upload your data, we're grabbing everything, carbs, insulin, and CGM data all in one go. If it's on the pump, it's coming off the pump. It'll be in your Typo account. And this is what we're seeing here um, right now, for example. Um, thank you for your question, Melissa. Do, do, do. A question in from Stevie. Do I have uploads and reporting from a Medtronic 670G with auto mode? Uh, you do. This is a control IQ focus thing, but hang on one second. I actually kind of prepared for this. Wait for it. Boom, 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 boom. Where is? All right. We're going to reshare my screen. New share. All right. I know where I said we're doing control IQ, but for the folks out there that want to look at 670G data, yes, you can view 670G data in Tidepool. Let me show you what that auto mode looks like real quick. Do, 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 do. So here is auto mode from 670G. Again, you'll see the automated basal delivery here. 
And when you are in manual mode within the 670G, we have an M flag at the top here of this basal section. And you'll see the basal delivery that is shown when you hover over that segment there. So again, this is what um, 670G data will look like in Tidepool. You'll note that a lot of this actually looks sort of the same in terms of the CGM data, in terms of the carbs and the boluses. That's because we're standardizing all the data that's being uploaded from all the different devices. So um, you are learning just one display system as a clinician in particular, you're learning one display system for all the different devices that Tidepool supports, which I think is also so very, very cool. Thank you for your question on that one. Where did my data go? Let's bring it back one more time. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, from uh, Joanne, I second the uh, I second appreciation for Christopher sharing his data. Fellow type ones relate to all the fields around that. Thanks. Uh, thank you. I, I'm in a decent place mentally when it comes to my diabetes data, so I'm okay putting this out there for the 25 of you out there that are um, checking this out. Um, but yes. Your diabetes can well vary. It's okay. Some, some days are better than others, um, but green is still goal. Um, question from Russell. Thank you, Russell. Are there any typo reports or views that would show analysis where basal adjustments may be needed? Uh, no, this is only looking at the data from the past and we're presenting it to you. So you can make those assessments either by yourself or with your care team. So um, my recommendation is to um, talk with your diabetes educator or endocrinologist share with them your Tidepool data. If they're not using Tidepool, send them my way and I will get them on Tidepool or I will try to, uh, and we will um, uh, work on getting that in there, but we are not making any settings recommendations within the Tidepool software now. Thank you for your question, Russell. Uh, question from Kay, will you touch on Tidepool mobile? Um, so with respect to the focus of this webinar and control IQ and uploading data using Tidepool uploader, Tidepool mobile doesn't play as big of a role in how um, uh, and how you're interacting with your data. You can use Tidepool Mobile to add notes to your Tidepool data to add context to things. So if you're walking the dog, um, if you are making site changes and you want to document when that's taking place, if you want to um, uh, indicate you know, things related to your menstrual cycle, exercise routines, anything relevant to your diabetes data can be made as a note within Tidepool. And those notes show up at the top here um, uh, of your uh, daily view um, within Tidepool Web. And you can also review those notes on your phone. So the core uploading experience is still going to take place on your computer, um, but when it comes to Tidepool Mobile, um, you can use that still to make notes on your data to, again, add context when you're going back to review things, because I can barely remember what I did yesterday. Uh, remembering two weeks ago was going to be a task, which is why I use Tidepool Mobile to actually make notes whenever I want to focus in on certain things related to my settings. So thank you for that one, Kay. Um, question from Joanne, can you show an example of where the extended bolus would be shown? I can, because I did one recently. Where was it? Was it on the 16th? So I'm going to navigate back to the basics view real quick to find this. Within the basics view, again, we have this filter available for the extended bolus, and I found one. So I'm going to click on that. And we're going to see, oh, yeah, so this was a wild time. Um, so we have an extended bolus here. This is a lot. We're going to try and read through this. All right, so we have the blood glucose entered. We have the carbs entered. We have the suggested amount of insulin delivered. I opted to take a 25% bolus up front, as you can see, and the rest of the 75 we're going to be delivered over the, over the next um, I think three hours, um, or maybe it was two hours. Uh, and then I actually interrupted this bolus because I was going low and started freaking out. So I actually stopped the <laughs> extended bolus here, which is why you see that red interrupted mark and how much insulin wasn't delivered there. But um, to your actual question, we have the extended line here to indicate when the extended bolus took place. You can hover over that segment to see all the details related to that extended bolus. Um, again, this was a wild time here. You can see, I actually, this is kind of wild. I kicked in exercise activity to, um, to accelerate control IQ, reducing my basal because, uh, and when you're running exercise activity, the target is 140 to 160. These are the things, these are the things you learn because you can't set a temporary basal while you're running control IQ. I want to interrupt just quickly because I've looked at these questions. There are a few questions that I think we can answer all at one time asking okay. about T-Connect mobile. Um, asking if, if people can upload their pumps to Tidepool via um, mobile devices or if the data from T-Connect Mobile goes into Tidepool. And mm -hmm. my answer is not, not at this time, but you're more than welcome to reach out to support at tidepool.org to request that feature. And if we can change anything um, in the future or, or utilize that function, we'd be happy to let you know. But at this time, it has to be, the pump has to be plugged in to a computer that runs Tidepool Uploader. Um, so no mobile uploading at this point. Thank you for that. Um, let's see. Um, 
bum, bum, bum. So we have the recommendations. Does Type will have any recommendation recommended ways to send data um, to providers? Um, so broadly speaking, I don't think I can. Hang on one second. Let me pause this real quick and check something. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be okay. So bring it back real quick. Okay. So, uh, so Brandon, your question was, uh, can you, how do you um, basically send your data to your providers? Um, within your account, you can click share and you can invite a new person to view your data. Um, so you can enter the email address of any other Tidepool user, including your clinician, and they would receive a notification that you want to share your data with them. If they're not using Tidepool, then they need to start using Tidepool. If it's your provider, again, have them send a message to me, clinics at tidepool.org, and I will work on getting them set up within Tidepool and we can go from there. Um, but broadly speaking, uh, you are in control of your data with Tidepool. You can share your data with any Tidepool user that you see fit. You can also stop sharing your data with any Tidepool user as you see fit. Everything is up to you. Uh, thank you for your question, Brandon. I'm actually going to jump down real quick to a question from Mary, um, which is somewhat related. Uh, is our Tidepool account and data private or shared with anyone? So by default, it's your data. Excuse me, not by default. It is your data. You are in control of who has access to it. By default, nobody else has access to it but you. You choose who you're sharing your data with. You can choose who you're stop sharing your data with. Uh, you're in full control of that the entire time. Um, and yes, your data is private. Tidepool software is HIPAA compliant to the nines. This is something we take very, very seriously. Thank you for your question. Mary. Um, question from Lois. Oh, I can see the end of this question section. This is exciting. Question from Lois. Can you please show the data um, uh, that the clicking the trends bar shows? Um, and Robert trends, had yeah, the same sure. question too. So this will... the trends bar. Okay, okay, well, we can do that. We can actually talk a little bit about me adjusting my settings over the past couple of weeks. So uh, in the trends section, we are now looking at uh, my CGM data currently over, over a two-week window. We can adjust the data that is presented in the trends view to show one week of CGM data. Please load two weeks of CGM data and four weeks of CGM data. You'll note on the right side, our summary statistics showing time and range, average blood glucose, time spent in automation, average time spent within exercise and sleep activity are also updating dynamically based off of all the data you have presented. We're also showing you GMI. And again, that is an A1C approximation based off your CGM data and standard deviation and coefficient, coefficient of variation for your CGM data. You can also get more precise with the data you're looking at. So if you want to look at just weekends, you can look at four weeks of weekend CGM data. Look, how, uh, look at how much opportunity for improvement there is there. Let's stay positive. Um, if you have swim practice on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can look at four weeks of Monday, Wednesday, Friday CGM data for example. The key here is that you are focusing on the data that matters most to you for your analysis and your um, way moving forward. Um, so we can do one more example of me making changes. So uh, what was it three weeks ago that I started talking about my overnights? I think so. Is it here? Yeah. So here I think is where I started um, wanting to actually assess my overnight CGM ring. So you can see my time and range for this one week, 72%, not bad. Um, not bad, excuse me. 70% is what I want it to be around at least 70 is what my personal target is. But you'll see within my CGM trends here, there are a lot of lows taking place. This um, dark gray bar here is actually representing 50% of my CGM readings for a half hour of time. Let me bring this back real quick. So you can see the majority of my CGM readings are actually starting to trend a little bit lower than I like. So I started to take a look at my overnight CGM readings and made some adjustments and started to pay a little closer attention to what was happening before I was going to sleep um, and then paying closer attention to my data after I woke up to see what happened overnight. So for a week, things got a little, see my, I changed my settings on the 19th. For, so for a week, my settings were a little, or my seat, my data was a little less than ideal in terms of what my targets were. You can see a lot more trending, um, uh, a lot more readings that are higher than my target range. It happens. I stick with it. I keep making a few more adjustments here and there. And I was able to bring it back down again. And I feel actually pretty good about the progress that I'm making. Again, with respect to my personal diabetes targets and my decisions on what, change, what setting changes I'm making. Um, you can see uh, with a little time, a little persistence, um, that the data is actually reflecting um, and showing the results of my effort. And that's the key here. It's not necessarily um, the fact that I have, um, you know, I have 80% in range for this week. Like that's a, a great number to see. But for me, uh, I find personal value as I'm looking at my own diabetes data in seeing the direct impact of the changes um, that I'm making to my diabetes um, management approach. So if I'm focusing on my overnights, I'd like to see, and I like the fact that my data reflects the fact 
that I'm, I'm seeing progress along those lines. So I'm seeing fewer lows overnight. I'm seeing a lot less variability overnight. That's what my goal is. And the fact that my data can show that my effort is actually going through and delivering on that goal is pretty rewarding for that. And I feel pretty good about that there. Um, so thank you, Lois, for your question there. Um, uh, last qu question from Robert. Are you going to show the trend graph? So Robert, hopefully this does answer your question around um, the, the trends view. Again, this is all within your typo account as you are going through. Um, the last thing I'll note, because somebody did, I remember saying a question about um, the profiles that are set up. Within the device settings, you can see the different profiles that you have. Um, I mentioned my settings changes for my overnight. So I'm actually running a profile that I called chill. And I called it chill because my previous setting had a lot happening overnight as you can see, um, and I wanted to chill out a bit. So I reduced my personal settings with my own evaluation of my own data to sort of chill out my settings and uh, sort of create a new baseline for that. The key here though, is that within the device settings view of type web, I can quickly assess where everything is rather than needing to scroll through everything you see there. That is a good uh, so. um, point though, that your target that shows in your settings are what you have set, not what control IQ is currently using. That so if correct. you have your target set to 180, it's going to show as 180 right there, even though Control IQ determines its own target based on which um, activity mode you're running. Yes. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. One final question in from Kelly. Uh, what are the plans moving forward for Tidepool? Um, hang on, we're stop share. Stick around. <laughs> um, Tidepool Loop is still in development. We are waiting to hear back from the FDA. It has been submitted to the FDA. We will provide updates to the community as we have updates to share. Uh, we are still working on adding new devices. Um, blood glucose meters in particular are coming up from RelyOn and GlucoCard. So if you're a clinician out there, um, those updates are coming. Stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, I mean, there's always, I want to say always, well, there's always work happening. Not all of it is stuff that we can initially share right away because who wants to know about a TLS update or migration or reversion? Like, Nobody cares, not nobody cares. That's not something that really is engaging in terms of this webinar that is now 16 minutes over time. Um, <laughs> but we are constantly working and as there are new exciting updates to share, um, you'll see my name and face in the signature of those emails. So keep opening them, keep, keep contributing to my open rate. Thank you for that one. Um, uh, last question before we move on to the final slides, will this recording um, be made available after the fact? Yes, uh, anybody who has registered for this will receive an email notification. Um, for the uh, email notification with a link to the archive webinar, excuse me. All there right, were, so, um, oh, I just want to interject one more time. There were yeah. a lot of great um, feature requests in the chat. So if you have any features that you think we should know about that uh, would make your Tidepool experience better, either with or without Control IQ, you can always send those to support at Tidepool.org because we track every single one and we tell the team about them. We That's actually a big part of what I do, we take those requests very seriously, and that's how we add new features to Tidepool when when it's feasible for us to do so. So, is there anything you think we could be doing better? Please, please, please tell us. Thank you for that. All right, uh, let's round it out here. We can say goodbye. Um, so again, for the clinicians, Abby, you have, I think this is your slide, right? Um, sure. Um, so Tidepool, why would you use Tidepool? It's, it simplifies um, uploading. So I, when I worked in clinics, I wanted one, one software to upload everything. And, and that's what we tried to do here at Tidepool. Um, we're always updating to add new features, new support for devices as fast as we can, um, as long as they're safe and reasonable. So you'll get um, communication from us about new updates as frequently as we can. It's free, which is always nice. I love free stuff. Ooh, I think I'm low. That's why I'm beeping, if you could hear that. Uh -oh. um, and if you have any questions, finish? you... Like pretty flat. I feel okay. Um, you can always contact clinics at tidepool.org for um, support if you have any questions, if you want to get started or you you need some help with your clinician account. Right on. Um, all right. So we've covered all of your questions. Thank you all. We were going to cover questions at the end and now we are 18 minutes over. You all are rock stars. Um, so if you want to get started with Tidepool, if after all of this, you are suddenly intrigued, hopefully you have been. Otherwise, I have work to do. Um, you can get started with your own free Tidepool account at tidepool.org slash sign up. 
Uh, when in doubt, as Abby mentioned, uh, you can contact support at typepool.org if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you want to give Abby a thumbs up because she did fantastic during this webinar. You can send that um, appreciation to support at typepool.org. And lastly, uh, we are a nonprofit. We do accept donations. You can go to typepool.org slash donate to make your um, uh, tax deductible donation where allowable by law. And there is an awesome option here to make your donation recurring if you are feeling so bold and generous um, to make a recurring donation on a monthly basis. That'd be really cool too. typepool.org slash donate. Um, that has been it for our lovely webinar here talking about Typepool's official support for Tandem's Control IQ technology. Take away that screen share. I promised everybody a quick shot of the dog. Here's the dog. Hi, Miles. That's Miles Davis. He says, thank you all for attending this lovely dog. webinar. That was my hand. Hi. Um, Abby, thank you for spending an extra amount of time with us today. Shout out to everybody who was Love in attendance. It. Shout out to everybody watching the archive. Uh, so yeah, I'm Christopher. That's Abby. Y'all have a great day.